Welcome to Rockstyle Productions, where in this video we are going to check out the MoCo Joypad controller for the Nintendo Switch. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rockstyle Productions, and before we get started, I just want to take a second, as always, to just say thank you for stopping by and checking out what we have going on here today on the channel. I really do appreciate it. If you like what you see here, I invite you to check out some of the other videos we have on this channel, including videos featuring other MoCo products. Mostly we've done grip cases and transport cases to this point, so this is going to be an exciting one for us. And if you really like what you see here, do me a huge favor. Hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell notification. And let me know in the comments, when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, do you prefer the original Switch with detachable Joy-Cons, with the original gray color, or with the red and blue? Really kind of curious to see your thoughts on this. So MoCo, like I mentioned, is an accessory manufacturer and they've done a lot of stuff for the Switch and the Switch Lite, most of which has been cases and accessories like that to this point. Their latest accessory that they did send me to test out, this is their, the best way I can put it, it is a Joy-Con alternative. It is designed to be a less expensive replacement or secondary set of Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch, but it has some additional features built into it too. One of the biggest features about it is the price. They are available at under $40 for the pair versus $60 to $70 for a set of Joy-Cons, considerably less expensive here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it, we're gonna throw it on the bench, we're gonna check and see how they come out of the box, we're gonna do a little gameplay, let's get started. So here we have the MoCo case on the bench and everything. It does have just, I, I tried peeling this sticker off and everything with the barcode. Uh, it came delivered from Amazon, quite honestly, so uh, even though they provided it to us, it came from Amazon, which I thought was interesting. Uh, so on the front, you can see it does have the, the blue and the red, and I didn't notice until looking right now, it's actually reversed of the blue and red on the actual Joy-Cons. It's interesting they decided to do that. It's the 25% different, just like uh, Star Trek and CBS, I guess. So it has vibration alert, an ergonomic design, separated D-pad, and combiner for Joy-Con. So even here, they are calling it a Joy-Con, even though they're kind of staying away from it everywhere else. On the side, you just get kind of a look at the controller. Same on that side. Let's look at the back real quick. Product function, alternative controller handheld mode, visible player indicator lights, natural ergonomic with standard button layout features motion controls and advanced gaming buttons three leds or three leds for power button mapping button mapping player number and low battery warning uh, the comfort grip brings the left and right joy con controllers together to make one comfortable controller so you can play as long as you like lightweight ergonomic grips will keep your palms happy hello and your fingers from cramping at home or on the go simply slide each joy con controller down the rails until they click so let's open this guy up. Now there is a piece of tape on here I already did uh, cut through with my X-Acto knife. Goodness, this box is hard to open, I don't know why. What's in the box, man? It's a box in a box. So there you have the controller itself. You can see in kind of that, that styrofoamy type stuff. So let's check out the controller itself first. Um, I will say, very slippery plastic to start with. I wish it had this texture on these two parts, um, but I'll tell you, it feels like the Joy-Con grip just molded into the Joy-Cons itself, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The analog sticks themselves look a little bit smaller than the actual OEM Nintendo ones, and again, we'll bring in the actual one. You can kind of see, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this out and we'll compare them side by side. Well, I guess side by side, they're a bit closer than I thought. Um, the placement of the buttons a little bit lower here than on there. Uh, does still have the capture button there. And then the minus button is an actual round button here. So interesting kind of design aesthetics they decided to go with. With the OEM Joy-Cons here and here is the uh, MoCo one. You can see the L and R and ZLZR triggers definitely smaller on the MoCo variant than the original one, where this kind of wraps around the Joy-Con more. Uh, this is really just a button right on the top of each controller itself. Yeah, this plastic is very slick, I'll say. Yeah, this just has a duller finish on it, which makes it a little bit less slippery than what this is. So we'll set 
the Joy-Cons aside there. We have a charge cable, which looks to be, that's USB-C, replacement joystick cap. Oh, so I guess I was thinking these were kind of rubber doodads that would go over the thumbsticks. These actually replace those, good to see. And we have our software, or our, not our software, our manual. I saw how to update, so I was thinking software there. Uh, let's see, make sure you read this guide. Let's see, so on and so forth. So it walks you through all the button assignments and everything about the product. Uh, vibration, accurate multifunctional motion control, improved ergonomics, providing a more comfortable grip, includes a USB type C cable and detachable Joy-Con grip connector. Uh, how to connect, it's the same as any other normal Joy-Con right here, quite honestly. Grip mode, tells you how to go ahead and connect it to the grip. Again, no big deal. Uh, after completing the first connection, reconnect Joy-Con with the paired cable, okay? How to charge the Joy-Cons. Uh, the Joy-Cons can be charged the following ways. Uh, connect the Joy-Con to the switch dock using USB cable or directly to the switch AC adapter. Charge the console, or charge through the console. So it can provide power from the console, or it can get power from the console, that's good. Again, how to detach the Joy-Con controllers, charging indicator, troubleshooting. All right, let's go ahead and let's actually test it out on our Switch. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna actually detach it from the grip mount or whatever you wanna call it. There's a button on the back of each Joy-Con to do that. So we'll just press and slide. Okay. Same with that guy there. Now, one thing I wanna look, now looking at it here, it does have the SL and the SR buttons, so you can use this as like a, a handheld Joy-Con if you'd want. That's, that's good to see, and the blue one has it as well. This is really just a piece of plastic to mount the two Joy-Cons to. All right, good enough. And I know that this will pop up. No, you will not be able to mount this in any other Joy-Con grip holder or case or everything, anything just based on the shape. Um, I do wanna just check here real quick, again, with the official Joy-Con. You know, the size and shape of it. So we'll go rail to rail that way. And you can see that the Mocha one is a little bit longer, but ever so slightly, maybe two millimeters on each end. I mean, this is pretty close in size and shape to that. So let's pop off our Joy-Cons we have on the system itself. And now this should automatically pair as soon as I slide it on the rail. There you heard that one. Let's check this one. And there. You know what? I can't lie. This is damn comfortable. Um, I didn't expect it to feel this good, but this is actually really comfortable. I'm, I'm shocked. What it reminds me of is seeing, if you've ever seen or heard of the Satisfy Grip, uh, which clips on the back and kind of gives you this, this sort of form factor. Um, this is really good. I, okay, Moko, you have my attention. Now the question is, how does it play? Um, you know, buttons there feel good. Analog sticks feel decent. You know what I'm gonna do? Home button works just fine. Um, it does feel a little weird on the back that that's thicker. Um, and I just caught it with my fingertips at one point going back there. I, I do kind of wish that it was a similar thickness at that point, or if it kind of could taper towards the back of the system um, so that you didn't have that sharp edge. I understand why, because they had to accommodate the, the SL and SR and they had to make it, I, I bet you they had to not put those buttons in the rail for patent issues. Um, I'm gonna fire up some Street Fighter here. Um, I hate playing this thing in handheld mode and this may change my mind. Um, I wanna see here, does this just pull out? So that just pulls out there. So looking here, you can see that there's two tabs that are longer than two other ones. So looking at how I pulled that out, it looks like those go uh, along the vertical axis. There we go. Perfect. 
Okay, so that's pretty simple and straightforward to change out. So I'm going to turn off the overhead light here so you guys can see the screen a little bit better. So I can do the pretty much all the moves, no problem. Got him! Damn! That's really good. All right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to pause, slide this out, and I'm going to slide those back into the rails. All right, so now, again, I've got it in the grip controller. Come on! Oh, this one's going to be close. Got him! All right, now we're going to hook it up to the TV, and we're going to do some gameplay there. Um, so far, better than I expected. A heck of a lot better than I expected. So we've got the uh, the Moco controller back in the grip, and one thing of note, this will not wake up your system. I had to actually turn my switch on. I, I Basically, it's been overnight since I first filmed the first part of this, um, and I let these charge overnight. But when I hit the home button in the grip here, it did not turn on my system. So let's go to one of my favorite games uh, that I've been playing a lot lately, Horizon Chase Turbo. And we completed the rookie series, so let us go on to the world tour. Let's go to Greece. A little bit too heavy on the gas. I will say right now already, I'm feeling that I wish the, uh, and I said this earlier, the LR and the, uh, uh, the L and R and the ZL, ZR triggers, I wish they were bigger. This long straightaway here is one of the reasons why I went with the Audi TT was just to have not only handled well, but could actually handle down the straight well and handles the corners decently when I don't hit the, uh, uh, the arrows. Oh, I lifted and didn't quite lift enough to get through there. I'm up to fourth with two laps to go. Oh, went too wide, caught the rock. I think that is going to catch me out at the end, and it does. All right, so Horizon Chase Turbo plays great. Let's play Castlevania, uh, Castle, Super Castlevania 4. Um, it, it's one of those where this whole collection is only about $20. You can find it on sale sometimes for about $15. And it just has amazing content. It has Castlevania 1, 2, and 3 from the NES on it. Super Castlevania 4. It even has, um, oh, what is it called? Um, Kid Dracula on it. I want to say Castlevania Junior, but I knew that was not right. So button presses are feeling, you know, exactly like I should. I'm not feeling anything out of the norm from using, like, my Pro Controller or, or my KMD Controller or any of the other controllers that I with this. So um, responsiveness feels good. Okay, Super Castlevania 4 works good. Let's try Relic Hunter Zero Remix. It's a great twin stick shooter. All right, let us take on some enemies here. Oh yeah, this is good, this is really good. And here you can see how I'm using the, the right stick to kind of aim as I shoot. If you like collectathons, if you like games like um, Smash TV, if you like Ratchet and Clank even, I'd say. Uh, this is just, it's a stupid fun game to play. Okay, works good with that. Now I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna go down here, system settings. I'm gonna change, or not that, I want controllers. And we are going to change grip order. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left Joy-Con. I'm gonna see how it plays as like an NES style controller. So we're gonna press L and R on this. Okay, and now we are going to go into the Nintendo online stuff. We're going to try some Super Mario Brothers really quick. That's 
actually not terrible. Uh, I keep resting my, my fingers on the triggers, so that's the issue there. Oh. So. Ha <laughs> ha! So that's how I managed to pull off the rewind. N not my preferred way to play, but I, I think it's actually somewhat more playable than the original Joy-Con. Buttons are nice and responsive. I mean, I, I'm not really feeling much of an issue here at all. Um, pretty good. Better than I anticipated. Let's wrap it up. So what do I think of the MoCo Joy-Cons that we have here? Well, why it rocks first and foremost is in handheld mode. These things are awesome. So I had reviewed the X Machina controllers for the Nintendo Switch. I didn't like them. I thought it made the system too wide. It didn't really, well, they are larger than the original Joy-Cons. It didn't add girth in the right places, for lack of a better term, to make it a more comfortable experience for me. I know other people have tried them and love those controllers. They also can only be used on the Switch itself. There's no battery power whatsoever. This provides a better overall grip in handheld mode, very similar to like if I've got my Switch Lite and I'm using one of the Hyperkin grip cases. I love those things and it makes it so much easier and more comfortable for me to play the Switch Lite in handheld mode. This does the same thing for me. It, it gives me the precise feel and control holding the system and it doesn't flex. That's the other thing on the X Machina controller is they kind of flexed as I'm playing and holding the system. I didn't like that. This doesn't do that. Now, this is, as I pointed out in the handheld section, it is thicker than an original Joy-Con, so I was catching my hand on the back section here, on my fingers, as I was going through and playing, and you know, I didn't care for that. That's just, I'll have to adapt and overcome to that as I play. Um, the button presses are responsive. The Joy-Con, the analog sticks work great. The rumble felt very good. Battery life is good. It even felt good playing as an NES style controller or a sideways Joy-Con. Uh, I would say more so even than the original ones. Now, what needs to be improved on these? First and foremost, the texture of the plastic, way too slick and slippery. I, I wish that they had a, and the Joy-Con just turned on here, but I wish they had almost the finish on the center joiner on the joy cons itself these are definitely slick and slippery on here i do wish the l and r and zlzr triggers wrapped around the side of the joy con more than what they do sorry i didn't realize that popped up there um, and the home button does not wake up the system so that is something that i was disappointed in uh, another thing that caught me off guard initially is the fact that it does have the USB-C ports on the bottom of, the, of each Joy-Con to charge it. My initial thoughts looking at the rails was that was the only way that you could charge it. Not true, it will charge on the Switch itself and if you have third-party Joy-Con Switch dock, Joy-Con controller charging dock, sorry, um, it will charge it through those too. Battery life felt very good. Everything seemed very precise the way that I was playing with it. Oh, one other thing, I did point this out during the gameplay section, is the capture button needs to be located further down uh, because in handheld mode, I would hit this quite frequently uh, when I meant to hit this button here. But for under $40, and I will have an affiliate Amazon link down in a pin post, these are quite good, a lot better than really they have any right to be. And I apologize to MoCo when I first felt them, when I thought that I could only charge them through USB-C, I was I, I was bummed out. I was like, these are they're not going to be as good as what I hoped. In handheld mode, they're exceptional. Uh, just great. I really like them. Now, will it replace my Pro Controller? No, it's not going to. The Pro Controller for me is my favorite way to play my Switch when it's in TV mode. Either the Nintendo one or the KMD one. You guys have all heard me talk about quite a bit. But I have no problem if we're having people over and I need more controllers for people to play with, you know, handing this to someone as player two and know that they're gonna have a good experience. Now, no Amiibo support, that's the other final thing. Uh, it does not have the NFC communication and, and that's another way also that it kind of helps reduce the cost. Uh, but overall, a better experience than I was expecting and hats off to MoCo for really 
in my mind, making the best handheld experience that I've tried to date on the Nintendo Switch. But these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. As always, you can also email me with any questions that you might have at rocksolidmail at gmail.com. You can hit me up on Twitter at rocksolidstudios. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash rocksolidproductions and Instagram at instagram.com slash rocksolidproductionsgk. Now, if you want to help support the future of Rock Solid Productions so we can do things like get new games, new lights, be able to stream more, be able to improve our audio through different tools like Hopefully you guys have noticed the audio should be much more improved on this video than some of our ones that we've had in recent months. Uh, you can do so in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash rocksolid. For as little as a dollar a month, $12 a year, you can get exclusive early access to all of our content, exclusive content that we post only to Patreon and a whole lot more. You can also join the channel and become a channel member. We have information for that, how you can do that uh, here on the channel itself. And finally, you can also head on over to our Teespring store on screen right now where we have t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more, all featuring the Rock Solid Productions logo on a different retro style cartridge. Now, as I mentioned too, we will have an affiliate link to where you can purchase these controllers uh, on Amazon. Unfortunately, there is no discount associated with it, but when you do purchase using that link, it does also help support the channel as well. These are actually really, really good. Like I just said recently, they're better than I thought they would be. A couple minor tweaks would make these great, but they're extremely good as it is. My name is Gary, and this has been Rock Solid Productions' look at the MoCo Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch. I really like them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.